Let's go to Jen back out in Roanoke. What's up, Jen? Hi, how are you? I'm partying. How about you? <laughs> not so much partying. I'm not either. I just <laughs> lied to you. I'm not partying. I'm like sitting at work, <laughs> like the furthest thing from partying. I, I'm like, right. I've got water in my cup for God. Okay. So what? what's up? <laughs> Um, I have a 21-year-old daughter who has recently attempted suicide twice. Man, and I'm, I'm hoping so sorry. You can... Yeah, it's been rough. Is she at home? Where is she at? She is actually in North Carolina right now working at a summer camp because she didn't want to be home all summer. Okay. Um, she's all grown up, you know. She doesn't, she doesn't need her mom. How old is she? <laughs> so, 21. Okay. Is there and... any history of this at all? Um, she had a history of cutting when okay. she was younger and hmm. we did counseling and medication and things like that and watched her very carefully and thought that it was under control. Okay. Uh, apparently when she went away to school, uh, she was about a six hour drive away from us at college and apparently she started cutting again when she got there hmm. and we didn't know. Okay. Uh, she was very good at hiding what she was going through apparently. Okay. Um, what was the, did you ever get a diagnostic underneath the cutting? Because cutting is a relatively benign behavior unless it's attached to, I get, they, like when somebody says, hey, my kid's cutting, I, my heart rate doesn't get up. Um, I usually want right. to know more, but this sounds like it was a enough of a disruption that y'all sought professional help. Was she ever diagnosed with anything? Not not that I was told from the counselor okay. or anything like that. It was just a okay. depressive and anxiety disorder. Well, that's, um, that's a, she's got a depressed. That's a uh, diagnostic. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. it. Yeah. yeah. If she's got an anxiety disorder <laughs> or a like major depressive disorder. That's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, sorry. So what, what is, what has led to like, what would she say if she was to articulate it to you or when you've talked to her, what would she say, um, led to her attempting to die by suicide twice? Uh, the first time, uh, she did not get into the law school she wanted to get into. Okay. And she was having a struggle with her roommates. One of them had been her best friend, and she got a boyfriend and didn't have time for my daughter anymore, and, and that whole story. Okay. And she just was feeling very lonely and isolated and unhappy. And of course, when I talked to her, oh yeah, everything's great. Everything's great. But it wasn't. And so that time she cut herself mm -hmm. right down the forearm with a razor blade. Yeah. Um, what, I didn't know it was a suicide attempt at the time. I was told that she felt like she wanted to hurt herself okay. and went to the hospital. So I didn't know until she came home that she had even done that. Who classified that as a suicide attempt? Um, the counselor that saw her after the second one. Okay. I never had any contact with the doctors or our counselors from the first one. Okay. I, I didn't know anything. And where she's 21 with HIPAA, it's hard to get any information. Would she not? Yeah, you can't get any unless she signs it. She, she wouldn't sign over? No. Hmm. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Tough, 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 tough. Hmm. Um, shoosh. so ask, ask me your direct question. I don't want to start answering questions that you're not asking. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to know what we can do as a family around her to prevent this from happening again. Nothing. Um, I honestly, Nothing. Oh, I was afraid. I mean, she's taking you out of her life. Um, <sighs> You can, can I ask you a really hard, hard question? Yeah. When you look back, she's 21 and you look back in the rear view mirror, this is a really hard question and I got two kids, okay? So understand my heart behind while I'm asking this question. Yeah. Um, has there been environments in the home that have contributed to her feeling untethered? Uh, her father and I divorced when she was eight. Okay. Um, because of his alcoholism. Okay. And he wasn't very connected to the kids. Okay. And she told me, she did open up one day a little bit and said that she and her brother felt like they were alone mm -hmm. during that time. Yep. 
Um, and I tried to explain to her, you know, that we were all going through that. And I really was trying the best that I could. Yeah. But um, most of the time, when was that she talked to you about that? Uh, just a few weeks ago. It was okay. before she left to go to North Carolina. Okay. Um, is it, I'm going to tell you something crazy. That's actually a beautiful mm-hmm. moment that you have. Okay. So I'm going to walk mm-hmm. back what I just said a minute ago about nothing. Okay. Okay. Here's what she desperately needs to hear. And I'm not saying this is cure, like this is curative. This isn't preventative. Let's take those things off the table. The ramifications right. here are so big that it can be paralyzing. Yeah. And the guilt that you feel that you should have mm-hmm. fill in the blank is overwhelming, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So you have to, what do you do for a living? I'm a psych nurse. No, and you're, no, you're not. I am. <laughs> and I volunteer as an EMT. Um, so you know what, I, you know, like before you called me. Um, okay, so. But I was hoping that you had some new insight. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. My promise to you is I do. Your guilt is going to be X fold the normal person on the street. Yeah. Because you not only think I should have done some things differently, but you think I should have been the one to stop this. I should have known. That's right. I should have seen it. So here's what you got to do. You got to own that. You have to acknowledge it. And you got to set that crap down, sister, because that's going to prevent you from reconnecting moving forward. Okay. It, the path forward is reconnection. Okay. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to get on to you about, and I'm going to do it like you and I are sitting on the same side of the booth eating nachos. Okay. So it's not me getting on to you like you dummy. It's not like that. <laughs> I know. It's me. You gave me a, a, a picture that I want to push on. Okay. Okay. When your daughter comes to you in a relatively fragile state and yeah. says, we grew up in a wild house. Yeah. And growing up in the home of an alcoholic I mean, you know that. You know the data on that. It's madness, right? The, the way that right. ping pongs through a child's body. And then you add the divorce on top of that. And then you add that existential question, what is so bad about me that dad chose that over, the bottle over me? Yeah. That he chose those other women over me. Is this going to happen to me like it happened to mom? And then, let's be honest, there were seasons when you were just trying to survive. And then a nine-year-old... Oh, yeah. Or a 14-year-old, they want to know, where is mom? Yeah. Or why is mom's door shut again? Why is she crying? Oh, crap, it must be me. We must have been too loud. I must have not got the right grade, right? That's not a fault thing. That's the way kids are wired, okay? Yeah. So when your 21-year-old daughter comes to you and is vulnerable for the first time, say the words, I'm sorry, not, no, uh I was there too. Okay. Okay? Here's what we're going for connection not being right the facts right. do not matter right she is trying with all she has to plug in to something that will hold because nothing in her life has ever held okay so here if i'm you i'm this is not um i'm not giving you some kind of deep medical advice you know that more than i do you're a psych nurse for crying out loud you know way more about that than me I'm going to tell you, talking to you just parent to parent, okay, and working with countless college students in this exact situation. If I'm you, I would drive down to North Carolina. I would make a trip, and I would say, hey, can I have an hour for coffee? And I would start that conversation with, I was wrong the other day when you called, and I'm sorry. I want nothing more in my life than to meet and know and love my daughter. And I spent a lot of years trying to survive and now I'm going to spend the rest of my life reconnecting with the most important two people on the planet to me. Yeah. And let's start there. Okay. And what we're doing is we're not looking for clinical things and you should be feeling this. We're looking for, hi, how are you today? I miss you. 
Uh, I've been driving her crazy with text messages. I know you have. I know you have. Yeah. I know you have. Here's what I don't like about her trajectory is um, cutting's not a big deal until it is, right? Right. And there is, um, Dr. Joyner's got some exquisite work on cutting. It, dying by suicide is such a violation of, your, of a body, of a person's body, that yeah. there has to be some sort of ramp up to it. And so... Um, Cutting it in, in, for a lack of better terms, can be practicing. I'm practicing hurting, and I'm going to push that line. I'm going to push that line. I'm going to push that line. And either yeah. my dad, who was a SWAT hostage negotiator, so when someone's going to take their life, they call my dad in. He would often say, Someone would climb up on a ledge of a hotel and be about to jump. And he said, I knew within a minute they didn't want to jump. I was worried they were going to fall off. And that's what we're right. worried about here. I don't think your daughter wants to die. God, I hope not. Nothing you've told me suggests that. I think she wants to feel something that is real. And yeah, she told me um, when she talked to her dad before she went to North Carolina that he hugged her and that it was the first time in her life she felt like he meant it. Mm -hmm. And that new set of emotions is unmooring. Like it's overwhelming for a body, and I just need to. I just need that to stop for a minute. I can't control that. I, I, that's new feelings for me, and cutting reestablishes control. Yes. And cutting. I didn't realize she'd been doing it until she had the second attempt. She overdosed, and when I went okay. to the hospital, I found places on her legs where she'd been doing it again and again and again. Yeah. So your daughter is not a problem to fix at this point. Right. She is somebody to be with. And as a psych nurse, you're going to have to turn that down a little bit. <laughs> and she doesn't need another nurse. She needs her mom. Yeah. And that's going to be used doing things probably different than you've ever done. No defense, no coming out swinging. And by the way, you've been married to an alcoholic. Yeah. Who left your family. Like you've been through trauma too. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we, there's, there's a huge rabbit hole for me. We could go down. That's right. But listen, <laughs> That's... Uh, very, very common. My guess is if your boss calls out a performance issue, you are nuclear. And if your neighbors call out a something like, your lawn needs, you're nuclear. Nuclear. It's not like George W. Bush. And <laughs> my guess is when your daughter called something out in the home, here's the way I feel your body responded before your head did. I tend to lead with angry. There you go. And that's, it's, it's an honest place to come from. And I get that. What would be a great gift is to tell your daughter, I usually lead with anger and I'm sorry. You need your mama and I'm here. And I know from past counseling that that's because I have a hard time being vulnerable mm -hmm. and anger is easier. Yep. Well, I don't know if it's easier. It just points you in a direction of something you care about, but being vulnerable is hard. Being vulnerable gets you killed. Yeah. You did that once. You fell in love with a guy and he left, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and not to mention you do trauma for a living. So you sit in other people's literally in their blood for a living. Like oh, you're, yeah. you're in it 24 seven, man. Your poor brain is, is just, it's like a, like that game pong back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like a, Ping pong. It's like a tennis match going on up there. And so you've got yeah. a lot going on in your body. Whew. Is your daughter under psychiatric care right now? Yes. Okay. Um, I would ask again. Um, and she might say no. And, and tell her, you don't have to do this. Say for your mom's sake, I would love to walk alongside this with you. And if you don't want me involved in the medical part and all that kind of stuff, I understand. But my promise to you is I'm not going to be angry anymore. I'm going to love my baby girl. It would probably help if you wrote this down and read it. And maybe even practice it in front of a mirror, in front of a friend. But we are doing a control-alt-delete on you and your daughter's relationship moving forward. Okay? Okay. Are you in? 
I'm in. Okay. College students have a very, uh, college students, that age group has a very distorted perception of time. As though if you take a semester off, everything is over. Right. I can't, I can't even yeah. count the number of semesters off I took. I used to I, convincing students and their parents, just take a semester off, go get a job, go see a counselor, get your meds leveled out and then come back to school. It's like super fine. When you're 25, you won't even know this happened. Um, I worked with law students really close. The end, it was end of time. I didn't get into law school X and Y. And then they end up at law school Z and things are great. Their yeah. whole life is different, right? But right now in that moment, it feels super real and data and info don't help. What helps is, I'm so, so sorry. And she only applied to one law school, the one at the college that she's at. And yeah. she graduated with her bachelor's a year early. She took on so much mm-hmm. in, in three years that she got her bachelor's a year early. A very common response to the child of an alcoholic is looking in the mirror and saying, he chose this over me. I'll give him something to choose me about. Oh, that's so sad. It is. It's heartbreaking. I will be so perfect. I will make such straight A's. And the crappy part is, if a kid chooses drugs, we've got systems for that. If a kid chooses straight A's as a defense mechanism, we, we, we just reinforce it over and over. And then they yeah. run up against failure, which ev- Steve Jobs got fired, right? Everybody fails. Yeah. But when failure, when, when that achievement is the cheap proxy for love for my dad and I don't reach, it's devastating. Yeah. See what I'm saying? This wasn't just yeah. not getting into law school. This is dad not loving me all over again. And she mentioned she has a younger half sister who's eight, and she she mentioned that during the same conversation that she feels like he treats her differently mm-hmm. than than she was treated at that age. And say and, you're say you're right. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And make sure she knows his alcoholism was a pro, it was his issue, not yours. And my goodness, he missed out on a wonderful, extraordinary woman. Oh, he did. Yeah. But that was his problem, not hers. Yeah. And thank God we're not there yet. I've talked to women who get divorced from men who are idiots and they go on, the men go on to grow up and get a job and get stable and they marry somebody else. And there's that rage and anger. And then it eventually turns to, thank God somebody's getting experience. The part of that guy that I loved with a guy that will actually bathe and go to work. Right? There will come a moment when your daughter will look at her stepsister and say, she's getting full dad, which is awesome. I'm glad she's not getting what I got. And she's not going to be there for a while. Right? That's okay. Yeah, that's going to be a long time. Yeah, absolutely. But he, even, he, he gave her the same nickname. Uh, he always called my daughter a little bit. And he's been calling the younger sister a little bit instead of my daughter. And it's like she's replaced her. Yeah. And your husband's probably trying to breathe. And he is trying, he, he has a hole the size of your daughter in his heart that he will never be able to fill up. Good. Nope. No. <laughs> no. Not helpful. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm trying to get along with him so that we can. Let me tell you this. Get this. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you an exercise, okay? Okay. And maybe do it with your daughter. But I want you to do it at home first. I want you to get four or five things that you're super pissed off about. That you get really angry about when you think about them. Okay. You probably have a list of 20. I want you to just get four or five of the best ones. And I want you to get a piece of masking tape or duct tape. And I want you to tape them to actual cinder blocks. I want you to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or something and get some cinder blocks and tape them to them. And then I want you to carry that around for a while, one at a time. Just carry it and set a timer for 10 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, set it down and don't pick it back up. And when you set it down, your back's going to actually ache and your arms will burn. And so that pain of that you think that anger is protecting you, it's not. It's keeping you from Uh taking a full breath. Uh Set it down. And when the burning stops, you will feel light and you'll feel good, right? Yeah. Practice this. 
Being less angry is a skill that you learn. It's not a moral issue. It's just stop. Practice it, okay? I want you to lean into this. So hear me say about your daughter. She has to be under care of a psychiatric professional. I do not like the trajectory she's on, okay? I think she's in a, in a dangerous trajectory. I don't like it. She's putting puzzle pieces together about dead and about this new little girl, and she's going from cutting to cutting where it's a borderline attempt to then I'm taking pills. That is a bad trajectory. And when we're looking at suicidality, we're looking at trajectory. Our behavior's escalating, and hers are. I don't like the way she's isolating herself. But she did reach out. She did reach out. She doesn't need a bunch of math facts from her mom. She just needs to know she's not crazy. She needs to know that she's loved and she needs to know that she's anchored into somebody who's working towards reaching back out. Okay. She also probably needs medication. She also needs to be surrounded by professional care. If she goes back to school somewhere, she needs to be plugged in with all of the school resources, if at all possible. And at some point, hopefully she signs a release and allows you into those conversations. Not for you to go solve it and to direct traffic for her. She's a grown woman. But for you to sit with her and hold her hand and say, hey, I think they need to get, there's this resource available for you or I'll walk alongside you because this one's going to be hard. And there's going to be some trauma healing. There's going to be some, a path to walk here, but she needs her mom. Okay. So let's set down this crap, set it down. And let's be about reconnecting. She's lucky to have you. Own what was and then be about what comes next. Stay on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of my latest book and I want you to read it and maybe even pass it along to her if you find some value in it. Okay? Hang on the line and uh, Jenna will get you hooked up.